Lucy. Excellent. Cool. Let's pick that up. Excellent. Hopefully that will sort it. Hello, Esther. Sorry, to, just let me get this sorted. Cool. Well, cool. Let's just pop that over there. So, and then we'll just grab a ruler. Hi, Juliana. Welcome, my darling. I'm just going to get rid of my glasses. You'll have to excuse the fact that I am dressed up with a nice thick warm fleece on it's quite cool here and it's not been feeling great for the uh, day so we've got uh, we're all snuggly good evening sophie hello connie good evening elizabeth i've got a lot of stuff on my desk but there we are why wouldn't i have a lot of stuff on my desk i'm just going to move it out to the side let's move that chair out of the way, that lot can go there. Let me just pick up some of these bits and here you go. There we are. Those will do to start with. Oops, let's just do that. Hi, Sheila. Welcome, my darling. Welcome, welcome. Right, let's endeavour to find a... Hey. So I have a very long, thin canvas. I have no idea where I picked it up from. But a long, thin canvas of any dimension will work for this. Hi, Julian. So it's more about concepts than anything else. Oh, dear. <coughs> Let's just get rid of that. So this time last year, we were having a retreat. And I wasn't very well. And guess what? We've got the same this coming weekend. And I'm not well. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. But hey, ho. Right. So I've and hard really about what to do with this canvas. Because it is only, it is just about four inches wide. And it is, I think, uh, 12, 20 inches long, or they're around. So it's long and thin. But I've got a little plan, and hopefully it will all come together. There's no guaranteeing in this world, is there? Oh, that looks like a new pot of paint. That's unusual. There we are. That is unusual. So that is the indigo dark blue in the acrylic paint matte as opposed to indigo this is a vintage blue which we're getting to the end of so we might have a happy dance tonight and this is country blue and then in the tube i have um some heliobore so which is a purpley blue so let the plan begin Yes, why not? Why not? Why not? We're going to do, be doing a little mixing. Let's just pop some bits of this onto there. There we are. That will work, won't it? And then I won't be contaminating too very much. And it's not going to stay looking like that, ladies. So do not stress. Do not stress. Let's have some bits of that. Ooh, we'll get rid of the lumpy bits because that's definitely not what's required. It's what happens with using old, old... Uh, old pots of paint but that's cool because it means we're going to use them up and that's even better there we are let's just add some bits of this and we might oh we've got a big clump of stuff in there there we are all right we'll do that and we as i say we might end up throwing some of that away and all i'm doing at the moment is getting some random bits of color in and we're going to spread them out and mix them up and we might add some white 
because we're creating just a you know, a random background really as much as anything else um because i wanted some colors that were going to pop um rather than it all being a single color and i know that looks like a mighty mess because you bright it is but that's definitely not how it is going to stay i'm just going to pick up a little sponge dauber and we're just going to have some ooh, some random mixing because the sponge dauber will help and because we've got a sort of mixes and we'll get more on the the sponge we're going to have lots of color variation but it's all going to you know sit there and blend nicely or well, that's the plan and if it gets too dark and too muddy because i've got everything mixed up on my brush um then that's equally fine i will just swap to a clean brush there we are let's just take while the going's good let's empty some of that up onto there there we are we'll get rid of some of that clear that around the edges oh dear i've got a brush that's about to fall apart that's not good is it there we are we do have more so let's just mix these in there we are so it's just an easy way of getting a variegated blue background without having to do masses and massive work just move that lump and allow me to just to get some variation really because that's all i wanted i didn't want an uninteresting flat blue color for my background and I could spend hours colour blending, just getting rid of some lumps in the paint, but actually mixing it up, spodging them randomly on my piece, and it just gives me a really simple background. And that's not going to work when it's washed, so I'm going to pop that in the bin. So really cool, easy way. And you could do that with creamy acrylics if you want, with a good spray of water to help dilute them. And I'm not going to add the heliobore. I think I'm just going to leave it with those through. So the dark blue, the vintage blue, and the country blue um, creamy acrylic mats. There we go. Let's just get rid of that. So I've got a little bit where I can see white on the edge. Not that I can't sort that out. So let me just pop that, she says, because it's long and thin, out of the way, on the floor. And I listened to bit everyone's views last, last week and cleaned my nice, let's just put the heater on, that will help get that dry. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. There we are, I can always neaten up that. And I've got my nice grey silicon mat that I can have as a clean surface. So I think that rather looks right. So I'm intending using that in landscape orientation. So, because um, I think I have the perfect spot for it. So now we have some greenery. So let's pick a collection of green colours. We've got olive and a vintage green to start with i think and <laughs> we're going to go green yeah that's the same color so that's always good isn't it yeah hi deirdre welcome my darling good evening sue welcome welcome hey hi jan sorry i didn't see you coming in good evening jill um that's jill Murgatroyd rather than Gillian Young. There we are. So let's start with a little bit of a mix and match because why not? Why not? Why not? Let's just pop some of that olive there. We might add in some other colours. We haven't got a dark green out today because the background is relatively dark and I want these to, to pop against it. And that is vintage green. And we can darken up as we want to anyway so that's always cool and the eagle eyes will have seen a bird so these come from the stamperia mold they've been cast with resin um, and primed with gesso so the super fast uh, the rapid resin in white 
cast earlier and primed with the, the gesso because that's what I felt like doing at the time. There we are. So let's just pick these up. So these are cute, gorgeous leaf clusters, which is always good. Um, <clears throat> so we just need to get a base there. <coughs> yeah, layer of colour and I'm sorry I am going to be coughing and spluttering because I'm really not feeling brilliant today but hey ho let's just add some of that in for a little bit of shade a little bit of that not overly worried we've all seen this is my standard method of painting and this for me this is about composition with a slightly different background I deliberately haven't I know, horror of horrors, picked up any crackle medium to use tonight. I know, that's really unusual for me. So there we are, it's all, all good in the world. Sophie, if you're still here, could you just tag Sarah Marchant for me? Because she's normally watching by now and she always lesser tags you to make sure you're all right so it might be just a nice idea so we'll pop that onto there we can add shades and color and we've got four of these and we're going to make a long thin composition today somewhat different i've done two pieces of uh, of furniture type items so now we thought i thought just we might just do a wall decor piece i know that might uh, i do quite a lot of these but pieces but that's that was the thought process thank you sophie much appreciated my darling much appreciated i just think it's just nice feel free to tag any of your friends please feel free to share the video wherever you want to share it to um sharing is caring and the in the you know and it just might just help keep someone's uh preserve someone's mental health and well-being might not say so we're not not intending to be overly precious tonight about any of this mind you having said that i never really am with my painting am i it's always a little bit free form i can paint neatly if i need to um and i do have some molds that i will be using that i that will require a bit more um care but not tonight because i think then you, you know they sometimes they're just it might just take me you know an hour and a half then plus to decorate what we need to paint one ward it might be interesting but it might be very very boring let me know your thoughts about that because we can always rethink how we do our lives and you know we're happy to have feedback about things that you might like to see done if it's feasible to do on a life, then I can always, uh, yeah, I'm always happy to share. If there are any products that you'd like me to use that that might be helpful for people, and again, I can get them to work on a life, then that is also good. So, you know, feel free to drop some suggestions in. I currently don't have a project plan for next week, um, so that's. You know, so it's a, and it will need to be planned by the weekend because uh, I'm all wait and I won't have much time if I need to do other things. So feel free to to make some suggestions. Obviously, needs to be Pentart products, and because of Pentart's collaboration with Stamperia, it needs to be possibly using things from Stamperia rather than for lots of other companies um, because that is definitely their preference. Hi Ella, welcome my darling. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's much appreciated. There we are. So we've just added simple there. We'll add a little bit more colour, just give it a little bit of variation. Those can sit and dry. I'm going to wash my mucky mitts and we'll move on to another colour. I don't want to transfer that green at the moment. I will need a little bit of it, but I don't want it to transfer to things. So there we are. We'll just give those a little bit of a wipe down 
pop that green out of the way, pop that green out of the way. Let's pick up some cream white and let's go. There we are, we'll just pick up another brush. Don't matter really which one. There we are. Let's just pop that onto there. Get our base layers down. Might we add? We will add just a little bit of colour onto that one. So the green out, but let us just add a little bit of beige along with that green. Hi, Judy. Welcome, my darling. It's lovely to see you on my Pentart Live. Thank you so much for your uh, company this evening. So let's just pick up a nice fine line, finer brush. Oh, she says, knocking pieces of stuff off it. And then let's just add some streakiness with this and some colour variation into this. Got a different plan for the, um, you know, for the um, stem. But who doesn't like a pumpkin or two? I've done a few lives with mushrooms. I know I've done a few lives with uh, with these as well. But there we are. And then let's just add into here some little streaks of some green. We'll just add in. There are markings on this mould, so that sort of helps with the uh, how I'm where I'm putting these pieces. Um, so it's not that I'm completely losing the plot in terms of, of where I'm putting the, the colours on. I, there is a definitely a plan to, to it. There we are. Let's just add a bit more green. Let's just add a bit more colour. There we are. And let's have a green stem. It's freshly picked. I think will be it will work. There we are. There we are. That will look fine by the time we have finished adding it to it. So let's just pick that. I'm going to pop a little bit of that cream onto here. And let's just lid that before it gets too dry and I'm going for the red clay that I used last week rather than a really vibrant orange so we'll pop that there that'd be good can I suggest a Christmas themed star with crackle and metallic paints mm, um, mm, possibly possibly but metallic and crackle are not two words that go together particularly well because the one component crackle certainly doesn't crackle if you've put um if you put the the crackle over the top but do i take it you'd quite like a a christmas project i don't want that brown you'll have that we can have we can certainly think about that it might be just a little bit early for the Pantata Christmas theme project tend to have their Christmas ones a bit later there we are so we've gone for a very different shading there to our pumpkins from last week we're going to have a bit of a darker one now uh, so we're mixing them up but it's going to say it's not going to be um, we're going for a slightly different look there we are so let's just pick that up. We've got some different colours. We're going to give these a little bit of a dry in a minute and I'll come back to the stems on there. <laughs> I thought that wouldn't impress you. Cheeky monkey. It's more, some of it is more about what's achievable, my darling. Um, because with you know with the time because i did there are restrictions place i've just mixed a little bit of that country blue i've got a little birdie here comes from the um 
Christina Radovan's uh, for, uh, yeah, forest collection, I think. And we just want a slightly bluey grey base. And then we'll give this little lot all a quick black and purple smuggle. Yeah, that would be about right for your choices. Uh, Sophie, I, I haven't ignored that as a thought process. I'm not too sure about the sparkle. Black and purple might certainly want. <laughs> certainly be okay. So let's just give these a little bit of a dry and then we can start adding some extra details in because this is definitely about layering um, and not mixing my colours up too much. So, but I, I, I have now got the project papers for this weekend. There's not a bit of black or purple in them. There's not even any crackling in them. Uh, what I'm going to be using, but lots and lots of different paper mediums are definitely going to be coming out. So if I don't give these a little bit of dry now, what all that will happen is when I get the next layer of paint out, I shall just cover everything and get in a slight draw on mess and stuff. So that's yeah, having a little brush dry is definitely helpful. Yeah. So the bird is reasonably dry now, so let's pick up some light brown because I don't want a black bird. I didn't really want a blue jay either, so I'm going for make believe because why not? Why not indeed? There we are. Right, let's just pop that over there and let's pick up a reasonable. A reasonable brush. I wouldn't say it's the best brush in the world, but hey ho, because we all know I abuse my brushes. So that this is just the light brown vintage acrylic, uh, print art and um, acrylic matte. There we are. I think I will probably get away with a Halloween make for next week i might not there might be i might have to do something completely different i'm waiting for some information Oops. and i won't be live this weekend because obviously i'm going to be teaching so that's yeah that's going to cause havoc a little bit of havoc there let's just hmm i should have put a little bit of that bluey mix up onto the top of there so remind me and i'll come back to that i can pop it over the top of that and if i forget it won't be too terrible there we are and we'll just do that and we'll add some details into there and i haven't got out a gold for the for the legs but hey ho so we're just going to mix a little bit of that orange with a little bit of that and give a, a slightly more orangey tone for the little feet of the bird there are three or four different birds on that on the uh, um, on the mold that I've used it is one of the silicon molds so slightly more expensive but not impossibly so let's just add a little bit of color into the tops of here and that's just to add in so we've got a little bit of variation and go i'll change the color for that so there we are so we're not completely flat we're not a single color and then let's do the the stalks for that i'm going to mix it a little bit of the brown with some of that olive so i've got a greeny brown that will work so i'm using the color that is already in my pumpkins and then some of that brown just to muddy it up so again that it's a, a more natural color and we're mixing our variations and these really are going to need a jolly good dry there we are before we can too much else to them they're still quite wet but that's okay we don't have a problem something to, oh i'm so sorry sarah that's not very nice is it i've got a friend who's also lost it or someone who was very close to her 
this over the last few days it's not easy is it it's not easy Excellent. So let's just pop that over there and then let's just give these a a good dry because that's what's needed before I can do add some dry brushing and some antiquing because we need to bring out some more colours. Hello, hello Irina, welcome my darling, welcome, welcome. Good evening, Anna. Welcome, my darling. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Let's just give these a little wash. Then we can have a little bit of a varnish, I think. Right, I'm going to put a bit of dry brushing right at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put these definitely need to be properly dried before I can. Oh, I'm, before I can definitely add a layer of varnish onto these, which I need to do. And I can see some areas of the green that where I've missed. So let me just pick up, ooh, pick up some of that. Let's just add it, count it into the areas where I've missed it. There we are. And we can carry on to give it a bit more dry. There we are, that's better. There we are, so that can go into that. Oh dear, sorry, that's just made anyone see sick. Not the intention, I can assure you, to, to have everyone feeling poorly. There we are. I think that's the thing, isn't it? We do, you know, we, we miss our loved ones and we miss those that we are in contact with <coughs> as part of our day to day activities so very much. Um, and we're no longer there to, to pick us up when we're feeling a bit low or, uh, you know, or just needing a little break and a reset for the day. For me, I always keep into my classroom when I'm feeling a bit low. Um, but we each have different ways of coping, I think, don't we? There we are. Good. So hopefully most of those will be reasonably dry. And I am choosing to work with the decor varnish in matte tonight. Um, it's a matter of preference. You know, choose the colour that you feel works best for your project for this one i'm, I'm more than happy to for it to be bat uh me be a mat bat, mat even so this will go on milky it will dry text my you know see in my pieces um and my colors and hopefully stop they are spreading a little bit because it means they weren't completely dry, but that's okay. I can cope with that. We'll just be careful with what we're doing. Oh dear, that's not good, is it? You can see that I've completely missed the end of that beak. So that was just tidy that up whilst the going's good. And then just be careful we might with that because it's clearly not going to be dry before we carry on. We're gonna we can add the details into the bird later on. So there we are. We can pop the details back into there. Let's just add in. So we've got to do all of these, so it's all right. I don't have a huge issue. So they say this is just a varnish. It's just a way of protecting your pieces, and we've got a very natural look here by doing it like this. Let's just get rid of some of the thick layer on there. You don't need a thick layer. You're generally better if you can using you know, several thinner layers rather than one thick layer of, of, um, of a varnish. Um, and if you're on a flat surface, then sanding in between is always prudent. But as none of these are flat, um, 
sand, it, sanding isn't going to happen. Let's just get that into around all of the edges. And if you do the edges first, she says, hopefully it means that you end up with less on your hands. That might be wishful thinking on my part because we all know that I get paint on my hands on a regular basis. But there we are. We can pop that into there. I'm aware that I've picked up some reds and brown, oranges and browns in that, but it actually doesn't really matter. So there we are. Let's go around the edges of here. I might have to turn that fire off. It's definitely, I've got a little fan heater drying that the canvas there, and it's definitely warm around my legs. Let's just take most of that off. We can pop that into here, go around the edges. So you don't want to have such a thick layer that you get rid of all of the texture that has been put into the wall, into the mould. So just picking up the excess, bouncing it in, and then I can move it about quite happily. Won't take long to dry. There we are. And actually painting the edges is meant I've not I'm not actually too sticky tonight. That make a change. There we are. <coughs> I go through a lot of varnish as you might imagine because I you know I all I see all my pieces on a regular basis with with varnish and if i'm adding flat stuff to decoupage onto i'll often add five or six layers of varnish sanding in between to help smooth things out so there we are so let's just pop that on there good evening natasha welcome i didn't haven't seen you come in my darling it's much appreciated oh let's we get this onto here I think most of the products you will know how to use because I haven't got anything very uber complicated on my desk today. So let me just pop that there. Good evening, Debbie. Welcome, my darling. Let's get rid of that. In fact, let's just get rid of that lid altogether because it's going to be irritating and sticky. And let's just give that a jolly good clean. Let's try. Hopefully that will mean that that does not stick together. <coughs> And we'll have less of a problem with it. Now then, <laughs> let's just be very wasteful. Let's just clear that lot up. Put that into that. Oh, it's just a little, little soft tool. Let's just scrape that off, off my silica mat being careful not to damage the surface but then we can have a little bit of a clean up and then we'll be able to see what we're doing it doesn't have to be perfect but an uber mess is not very nice to look at so there we are let's just lift off the worst of it say so it's a silica mat so it will scrape off There we are. You don't need to be sorry or late at all, Stephanie or Sheila. We might all have busy lives and we just need to remember that um, and be grateful for when friends can join us. Good evening, Debbie. Welcome, my darling. There we are. Let's just give our little hands another bit of a clean. <sighs> because that's what's needed. I've got a nice background drying on the floor, which I'll talk back through for you, everyone that has joined us since. Mm -hmm. Let's just move these back in. Two squats, right? two shots. There we are. Let's put that spare piece of that up and get these dry. I don't want to bubble the, the varnish though, because that doesn't look very attractive once you've done that. So 
question of what it's doing, so it's only a question. Uh, it isn't a complicated life. Yes, there are lots of elements, but it should be one that I think is, right, if you have the products, um, is relatively achieve, easily achieved. Um, cause sometimes it pays to do some, yeah, something that doesn't involve 55,000 different techniques, but still has a lesson you know, less to, to be told in, in the making. I'm always saying it, you know, the life tends to need to be a balance of a, a make that looks pretty and effective, but also a degree of learning about the products that we are using um, from within the range. Unfortunately, there, there are a lot of products in the pen range, which makes it very easy to mix and match across different things. So see that I've got some relatively white areas from where the uh, varnish hasn't dried properly on that bird and then some of the deeper parts of these leaves and the pumpkins in the door. Or could be a butternut squash, I suppose, in which case it could have been an orange colour. Mm. Okay. What we've got, we've got, yeah. So we have the green antiquing gel. So let's put those out of the way. There we are. Pop that out of there. I have a different one for some of that. Mm, they're a bit sticky, but hey ho, I'll live with that. So let's just scribble this into the not nooks and the crannies of of the here, and then we can wipe back with a damp baby wipe what we don't want into here because that's going to sit quite well I think in the depths of the of the piece rather than in the top so the antiquing gels are permanent once they're dry so you do need to think about that and definitely don't um, you know don't let it dry um, fully before you wipe it back you can bite back as much or as little as you want. So we've taken our um, plain green piece and it all darkens and then we've got some colour variation into there. There we are. We'll just take off a little bit more because it's not dry, leaving the depth. So it just makes, you know, it just adds a, that extra layer of detail into our pieces which for me just makes the whole thing a little bit more interesting yeah um doesn't have to be you know if you like it without the extra detail or you want to paint all of the you know the multiple layers of colors into the leaves then that will also be just fine you know your projects ultimately so you do what works for you you know i'm very fortunate that I have all of these products so I can happily play away and a uh, year mix and match them and uh, these are water-based so that's cool I like it a lot and we'll just keep the leaves all the same so there's some consistency through our project I've had the that pot of green um, or olive antiquing gel has been with me since the they came out that'll be three Christmases ago now yeah definitely possibly four and so although it looks like I'm being generous it's 150 mils so it's a good size pot and um, you know I don't and it's one I use fairly frequently the only one I've, I've had to replace is the white and that's because I use it by the bucket full. And what's a shabby sheep? Um, the ones I've used least are actually the browns, surprisingly. <clears throat> you know, the ones designed for vintage effects. But, you know, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as you've got what you're happy with, it's all cool. 
So there we are, let's just pop that onto there. So our, our leaves have now got some extra depth added to them and we can see a lot more of the detail. So let's just lid that. We might come back to it, we might not. We're gonna see how we feel and I'm not going to be terribly worried about this. But I've also got some op the okra, which is a muddy, muddy yellow, if that makes sense. Rather than a brown. It just definitely sits on the, the you know, the clay end of the spectrum. There's no other, well, it won't matter if I get a bit of green mixed into this. There we are. So that's now looking much uh, more natural than it was. There we are. Be tempted to add just a little bit of a brown into the depths of those but I might well paint that in in a minute rather than properly paint it in rather than uh, covering everything I just want a little bit more detail I think into the depths of those so let me just pop that there pop that there lid that so these have, mat have muted some of those colors down a little bit We're not going to add glows to that. We'll just add. I've got a very, I've got a nice fine. I have nice fine. So this is the chestnut lacer gel. So I'm just going to add that into, paint it into those depths. They're there. They're there for the adding to, aren't they? There we are. So that's given that a little bit more depth. And this is, these are not really designed for this, the Lesser gels, but I use them for this quite a lot. Just adding a little bit of depth into the pieces. And they will, again, they will wipe back um, when they're not dry. There we are. So. Yep. Cool. So let's just give those a little bit of a blast dry. So we want to add some dry brushing onto these and possibly onto the bird a little bit of wax and some of the layering. What has everyone up to? My my uh, screen of comments hasn't moved for a little bit, and I never know whether that's because the book of face is being you know, seeing itself, or whether it's because I've missed conversations or things that are happening. Right, so let's just get some colours to dry brush. So let's take some of this vintage green. I know I mopped some up earlier, but that's okay. We don't need very much. So let's just take that. Have I got some t what, uh, paper towel in here? That'll be, yeah. I always have paper towel in my classroom. Yep. So let's just take a, a big fluffy brush. And knock off 99.999% of that. I still need some, obviously. I want to get paint into the bristles, but I don't want it to paint as a thick layer. There we are. So that my brush 
feels dry and then I'm going to take it flat to the pieces and you can add little by little by little I can see it's making a difference you might not be able to see on the live but it's picking up the veins are, are in this piece quite nicely and little and often is definitely the, the way forward it's just adding just another layer and there's plenty plenty still on here for me to you know to add in you really don't need gentle 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 if you think you're being if you're heavy-handed just move your hand away from the yeah if you hold it up here you're holding it tight and you'll be heavy-handed if you move your brush away your hands away then you then you'll inevitably be much more gentle with with what you're doing and that you know that helps controlling you can see that i haven't had to go back in really and pick up any paint um, i know I, you know i've just knocked back some of the shine from the antiquing gels that uh, so i've got the, the the green base color i've got the dark green of my uh, antiquing gel and then i've got a paler green over the top and I can come back if I want to at any stage so we're going to leave that there um the pumpkins or well, two of them let me just turn that fan off because it's gonna not be very nice and I just now need to find what I did with the the cream white and we'll just pop a little bit of that onto them we're going to repeat the process and I'm not worried about it being slightly contaminated with that and now i've got way 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 too much on there so just let me get most of this out of his brush onto here so that the surface of my brush is definitely dry there we are okay, okay. so there are a lot there's lots of texture textural details on on these pumpkins there we are. Let me just come back, back onto there. There we are. You don't. You really don't need to be adding masses and masses of pressure. So I've got a bit too much. I've just been a little bit heavy-handed there, but that's okay. I'll live with that. There we are. Kick okay, okay. So let's just add a little bit more colour into our bird. Soften him down a bit. There we are. So he is now looking a little bit more natural. They're not all white, are they? all brown. And that's helping pick up the feather details. Let's pop that in there. Up there. And I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny bit bit of gold wax and just pop that onto the beak because it will make a difference on the project and I'm going to add that also onto the feet and I could add it elsewhere but actually I'm going to I'm going to keep it really paired back because that's the look I'm going for now this is a complete cheat ladies I have a black pen and I'm just going to dot that eye in with that. And once that is dry, I can come in with a ballpoint tool and then just add a dot of white. But that will now need to dry completely. And then I will need almost, almost certain. Well, let's give it a dry. And then I'll find the pin because that's you. And it's that small if you try doing this with. Um, with an ordinary, yeah, you know, with a ballpoint tool, most of them are too big. So let's just pick up a tiny, tiny dot of white on a sewing needle. That's all I've got. There we are. And I can just dot the very center of there. And because I'm using a sewing needle, it's, you know, I can be really, really controlled and specific 
with how much is going on so that's another great tip let's just pop those over there pop that over there pop that over there and let's just have a little wipe because i don't want that on my canvas that we did earlier good evening lorraine welcome my darling right so oh, so i will have to do a little bit of tidy up of that but that's okay um i'm gonna do it now because it's my bad but i'm i will just literally do some of this on the edges it'll help mix the colors up on those edges it's not going to be too big a problem and then we'll work on the surface there we are. Got little bits there. Some areas that where, where, where the canvas is slightly different in texture. There we are. So I've got my canvas. I mixed all my colours literally by just plunking different areas of paint down um, on there with a palette knife. So very much for all the dignity and then just spread it out with a sponge. Let me see which way I... No, I do think I prefer it the way I had it. Is that okay? Does it really matter which way? That's the orientation that I want. Right, let's hope that one of these, some of these ink pads will, will sit nicely into the... Of course they're not going to sit nicely into there. Okay, so we will have fun and games. Let us just grab, because I need something to push against, I think, to get my uh, the pieces to... to come across. <laughs> right, okay. That will work for the time being. Oh, she says, look at all these bits. That's maybe too much. So I know that I am thinking that I might be doing. Come sir, come sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I've got the big one in there, approximately in the centre. Yeah. Like so. And I want another one of those tucked in there and that one is going to tuck there into that and that can sit there and then we'll just shovel that little lot along a little bit so it looks reasonably even on, along our piece so we've got an area yeah I think that will work that will work. Oh, I quite like that. Okay, okay. And my bird is going to sit. So I think I might have had that like that rather than like that. There we are. I think there we are. So we're going thin, wide, around. There we are. I'll just pop that like that. That like that, that like that. Hey, or I like it when a plan comes together, possibly. Anyway, a bit suck comes so. so we're not going to be fixing those in place quite yet because I'm wanting to add some extra detail into here and build a little bit of a story. And this is where some rub-ons will come into effect so <laughs> so let's just lift that up that can go there that can go there cool <coughs> so we can fill our gaps and so we might be setting ourselves just a little bit of a challenge because you know the, the stamperia rub-ons are pretty well behaved it has to be said <coughs> just need to make sure you have given them so these are from Golden Harmony, obviously. There we are. Pop that into there. And give that there. Okay. So those are going to sit there. That will sit there. So that will sit there. There we are. We're going to pop that like that. 
we're going to pop that like that and we have also some florals to pop in so we've got a, mi a real mixture i'm rather hoping so sheila i'm showing you it's definitely this is definitely about mixing it up adding the layers not being afraid um i did on my hour about grabbing some of the ephemera from the collection i've decided i'm not going to um Yeah, we will pop that one into there. Now I haven't got any padding beneath this, so this if it doesn't come off nicely, that will be eternally my fault because the canvas is bouncing underneath. And, uh, yeah, but the joy of uh, say of the of the Stamperia rubbons is they're actually really, really, really well behaved. As long as your surface is dry, they don't like a wet surface. But on the whole, they are really, really well behaved. There we are. So we're just going to add in, and we've got lots of different pieces that we can add into here as we go. So, <clears throat> there we are. So let's just take carry on. We'll add some of these. I am aware that I've got a couple more pumpkins. I've got a nice butterfly, so that's always cool, isn't it? So let's just add in some of these into there as we go and this is why i just wanted a really simple background this evening i didn't want to add lots of layers of crackle i think it wanted to show that you don't need to have lots of fancy techniques that you can still build lots of interest just by um you know by layering different things together let me just pop that there there we are, so that's sitting out, so it looks like that's there, that's there, that's there. There we are. Yeah, we're just going to move that along a little bit because we've crept, that's fine. And then we'll carry on and we'll start, we will add some more pieces because that's what we need to do. <laughs> she says, what did she do with her sheet? Oh, it's upside down in front of her. Of course it's upside down in front of her. There we are. So let's just pop that to sit in there because that's going to look rather cool. And this, is, of course, is why you need lots of different elements from the collections because they all have a slightly different place. There we are. And this is just allowing me to, by popping these on and off, it's just allowing me to, to build my composition. Good evening, Trees. Welcome, my die. That was my thought process when I was trying to work out what I was going to do. That I, that, oops, I wanted something that was going to really be a, a good foil for these oranges and yellows. And... Um, nature does it best doesn't she blue sky definitely does it best um, no question about it so we took our inspiration from from that and yeah we've got so there we are that's my bad because I took that off but it'll go back in that's fine we can cope with that and then we can carry on adding because we've got more floral elements. I think, let's just take that big floral and sit and try it in place. And pop that back, pop that back. We're a bit empty here, aren't we? So let's just pop that into there. There we are. And the joy of the of rub-ons or transfers is that they're opaque. So that means that you really can layer it on top of dark colours and you don't have a problem at all by doing that. So, uh, yeah, which again is really quite helpful. <laughs> Let me just, I'm going to take this. I'm going to say you could carry on. 
adding your layers to all the cows come home really there we are let's just pop that into there up to there so these are just going to provide that background in background detail for me just an extra layer of interest There we are. Okay. So let's see, that needs to go under there, that needs to go there, that can go there, that can go there, that can go into there, that will go there. And go there that can go there that's going to go there so i think i need something underneath here and something at that end so let's see what we've got that's a reasonable size that piece that corner i think will finish that end off for me that nicely there we are okay okay and I, I want something here I think there's something here we might put some of these smaller pieces in. So this really is just a question of adding and layering add to your heart's content. So I think I might pop that into there, underneath. Some of it will be showing and some of it won't. And that's equally fine. There we are. And we've got some smaller pieces that we can add in. I think it's helpful to get these main pieces in before I start adding or gluing down the um, there we are. that's better that's better that's, so that's just filling in those areas for me isn't it quite nicely he can sit up on there that can go there, that can go there, that can go there. Excellent. And then I've got some other bits. So that's looking a bit boring, for want of a better term. So let's just pop that into there. And then we'll get gluing. Hmm, okie okay, well we made a mess of that, but that's okay, we can cope with that, we'll just tuck that back into there, because leaves at this time of the year are not perfect, are they, they're all beginning to fall apart, there we are, cool, so let's just grab a... palette knife and start adding some pieces. Good evening, Blanche, my darling. How are you? So I'm adding quite a lot there, partly because I've got, um, I didn't cast these to the full height, so they're lit, but that's my bad. Nothing to do with the product. There we are. So let's just pop that there. Let's hoik the extra out of the way because the matte gel medium from Pantart dries white, dries opaque, and I don't particularly want a white splodge there, though some white splatters will soon disguise it if that's necessary. But yeah. There we are. There we are. Let's just pop this in. Mm. 
There we are. And we can add other bits as we see fit. Once we've got our broad composition into place. Oh, she says, dropping out upside down just as well it was dry. To... There we are. I'm going to leave that part part up and part down. I just think it's going to sit better. There we are. And we'll ink that through. So we might just move that a little bit and that a little bit in. Okay, okay. So that's broadly okay. Let's just mop some of that extra bite, extra glue up out of the way. And then we can leave those to settle down. Now let's just add our little bird who's going to sit there perched on that leaf because I think that's going to work quite nicely. Let's do that. So the art now is to walk away and let it dry. <laughs> Famous last words. <clears throat> and then I can come back and add extra pieces as I want to. I'm still thinking I've got a reasonable number of my little florals left and I might just add and I've got that butterfly haven't I? What did I do with my butterfly? We might just be adding that. So I'm going to add that floral under there and because of the I've used gel medium I've got time to lift that, pop it underneath and then pop it back down and get rid of the surface quite happily. There we are, that can go there. You can sit on there. I don't know whether I want to add that. I'm I am, I'm going to tuck it underneath there just to end it. Put an end piece onto it and I know I've just wriggled that and I might have to do a bit of cleaning for that but that's okay because it's allowed the gel medium is allowing me to alter my composition and just to add the extra layers in as I go there we are get rid of that cool so let's see what we've got we've got this butterfly and we've got the word dream so I think we might add the word here, down here. I think it might look quite nice, just tucked down there. There we are, just think there. And I don't... <laughs> well in doubt don't do it she says but actually I'm happy with that over there having got rid of the white which wasn't helping me see where it was going Let's make a mess of this as we lift it up there we are uh -huh. there we are I think that will work. There we are. <laughs> I've taken that off the piece, which is possibly silly. So I'm going to pop it back in because I'm not sure I'm liking it. So from there, let's just get rid of all of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of the padding. Thank you, Lorraine. I've got falling leaves, but I might put those on at another, yeah, once everything else is dry rather than popping them on now. Because um, it gives me some time to have a little think about where I want them. But I am going to add, because again, it wouldn't be me without, would it? 
just a few splatters. Let me just get a mucky paintbrush out of there. Pop that there. Give that a good spritz with some water to thin it down. And this will link all of my layers together, which again, I think is quite helpful. Okay. There we are. And I like a good splatter. We all know I like a good splatter. Is it splattered within half a millimetre of its life? Possibly. But that's the look that I definitely prefer when I'm making things. There. So, let me just wipe that mess. So that is our project for tonight. We've made an ombre blue background using lots of the acrylic paint mats with a really simple technique that I think anyone could do. We've added an assembly of moulded pieces and backed that with some added detail with the rub-ons and uh, then bought the whole thing, grounded all the layers by adding the splatters so they sit on the top but they're sitting on uh, on of the mold they're sitting on the rub-ons as the second layer and then they're sitting on the background as the third layer so all of those layers are now linked nicely together so i hope this has been a useful activity for you this evening please stay safe whatever you're up to i am anticipating being live for pent up next thursday um and I'll post more details uh, uh, next Tuesday even. I'll post more details about that when I'm able to, to do so. Um, and in the meantime, and uh, though I'm not live this coming Sunday because I'm teaching, hopefully I will be back live on my own page the following week. And I might yet do a live in crafting together with all brands as well next week. So please stay safe. Above all else, be kind to each other. Look out for each other. Whatever else is going on in this world, uh, that's the least we can do. So please stay safe. And thank you for all of your kind words this evening. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>